This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, Jared Morgan. Well, hello there. How are you going? Uh, how I'm going is uh, I'm going. The, the Christmas holidays are past. We are about to uh, head into the new year. So, you know, it's that uh, mild chaos, I guess. Mm, indeed. <laughs> Not only that, but, but into the new decade. Oh, yeah. Well. That's happening, isn't it? Yeah, it's a thing. Well, apparently it's a new decade. Some people will tell you that it starts this time next year, but no one yeah, actually those, really those, knows. Those people can just go right to hell. Uh, it's a new decade, folks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us how you really think, Chris. <laughs> 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 it's it's honesty, Chris. That's what's going on here. Uh, here's the thing that, right. that I like about this particular decade, starting now, is now we can say, hey, we're in the 20s. It's really weird saying you're in the teens, and it was dreadful trying to do anything that was in the aughts. Uh, in the aughts. Noughts. The noughties. The not Yeah. So, I mean, because and, and it's weird how... So back then it was everything was 2008, right? Doesn't yeah, and, and whatever. And then even when you got to it was 2010, and then these past 10 years have kind of I've gone into now like oh yes, yeah, 2018, 2019, but now mm. saying 2020 or just saying it's 2021, it just flows yeah. so much better. But you know, there's something that's going to be a bit um, interesting with the the 20s now being. The thing we're going to have to be quite specific when we want to actually do like a 1920s gangsters and flappers party. We're going to have to say 1920s now rather than 20s because it's not going to be a very good gangsters and flappers party. party <laughs> if it just turns up with what we're wearing now, is it? <laughs> Although, yeah, I no, I, I definitely see your point, but it makes me wonder: were anybody in the 1920s worried about what the 1820s were thinking? Well, maybe I don't think they probably would have had the the concept. Of, oh, let's dress. Let's do a dress up party of yeah the ninety. Oh, right, the because they only had thing. three outfits complete anyway. <laughs> pretty pretty much, yeah. I don't think they had the luxury of actually having no, they, costume shops with um with zoot suits available for them. Right, you know, they had their their dress finery, their well, work yes. clothes, yeah, and the other clothes. <laughs> yeah, the, the, probably their pajamas. Or their sleeping clothes, yeah. Or maybe they're there. I've gotten home. I got to take off the work clothes and I'll put on this other the, the house clothes. Call it the house clothes. House clothes. You know? Yes. That's it's right. one of those things that I learned from watching um, when I watched Deadwood, uh, which I don't know if you ever mm. saw that, but it was basically the whole uh, gold rush mining, but up in the Dakotas, and so you know, oh, wild, yeah. wild right. west kind of I've thing. Heard of it. I've heard and of you know, of course, everybody had the exact same outfit that they wore every single day, but you could see where it was, you know, their jackets was were tattered and everything, and what a mm. huge deal it was when they were able to buy a new jacket. Mm. You know? It was like a big deal. Like, they might get one once every couple of years. Right. Know? I mean, this, you think about it, that was now going to be your look from that point forward. <laughs> mm. That's right. You had to be very careful about what you bought. Right. Yeah. And yeah. But but it'd make it a lot easier to identify people because it's like, you know, the cartoons, you know, Scooby Doo, they always wear the exact same outfits. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. And the Simpsons, you know. All cartoons, <laughs> really. Them. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um all right, but that's not what you all came to hear to to be with, right? We're going to kind of do a little I mean, it's not much to year in review, but let's do a little year in review in, in pinball, shall we? Hmm, let's do that. Let's start with the big obvious, and that would be with uh, uh, Zen. Think about what we have gotten this past year. Basically, we got Volume 3, 4, 5, and the Monsters Pack. Yeah. Top quality, DMD, Williams and Bally pinball. Not bad for one year. Not bad. And, you know, from a release cadence perspective... That's kind of the release cadence, like that's the release cadence you need to get quality. If Correct. you think about it, and yeah. and in between there, the switch got all the Star Wars tables, so yeah. they're now up to date with everybody else. Um, and that was no small feat for for Farsight to pull off, and it's one no. they're still very proud of, being the fact that they are the first Star Wars game on the Switch. Yeah, I mean Zen, not Farsight. Oh, excuse me. Yes, Zen. Did I say Farsight? Oops. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> well, for those wondering, 
not much Farsight news to talk about in the year in review. <laughs> but we'll get to that. We will get to that. We will get to that. Right at the end. Yes, right at the end. Um, what else did, did Zen provide for us? Oh, hey, we got new physics update, which I know some of you hate, some of you like. Mm. I'm... I don't know, where do you fall on this little debate that's been going on with in terms of people complaining that the ball has slowed down and now it's too easy? What What's your take on this, Jared? I don't think we've even gone into this. Okay, well, look, I was playing... So I forget which one I was playing the other night, um, but I was a I was doing a repeated kickout, like a shot to the, one of the kickouts and then letting it bounce on a, a flipper to see what it did. And it was variable. It's not like it's railroaded like it was in um, in TPA or the Pinball Arcade. It's variable, so it's got a bit of variable to it, uh, variableness to it still. And that's that's been uh, my like, impression too. But go on. Yeah. So for me, um, it feels right. In fact, it's funny. You know, I go back to the um, uh, the earlier tables on Williams Pinball Mobile on Android, and the flipper action is different. Like it has the the flippers almost feel like if if I was looking at these from a mechanical perspective, they actually have drag on them when they flip. So it feels like the the flippers drag up to their their full stroke position and then drag back. It's like they've lost their spring, the little um, return spring on the um, mechanism underneath, okay. compared to the new ones which have a really snappy flip action. But I even noticed that like you're, I, I've been playing because of the, the challenges in Williams Pimple um, app. I've been playing for some reason a lot of um, Roadshow. Every single time I restart the challenges, it's Roadshow all the time, and it's got that sort of um, um, draggy flipper feel to it. Um, so I, I'm quite happy to welcome the newer tables and their newer flipper style because they're they're significantly better than the old ones, and it just feels like pinball more That's, to me. Yeah, so we're in agreement then because my my take is that. And to me, it's especially noticeable on mobile. There mm. is variation in the ball. Purely me playing Circus Voltaire and playing uh, Monster Bash. Mm. Uh, Circus Voltaire being where the ball comes off of the various um, uh, loops mm. can be of a variance. But Monster Bash specifically, it's the kick out. The ball does not do the same thing twice in a row. It does mm. variations of those things. And then just even, not regarding the kickouts, but with when you're flipping the ball and the ball interacting with the flipper, you can see the ball do variations of, of changes in movement, in direction. And I mm. don't see that in volumes one through three. No, um, I don't either. For sure. No. The, it's, definitely, it's definitely different yeah. in, in the other volumes. And I think it's different in a, in a positive way. And then the, the other thing that people are complaining about, they're saying the ball speed. Oh, the ball's too slow now. And to those people, I seriously pose this question. Have you played real pinball? Are mm. you purely basing this off of you playing digital pinball? Because if you have played real pinball, you'll know the ball does not whip around at lightning speed. And I beg you to go watch Spacey's Arcade, Greg's video, where he puts a marble on the table because that nailed it that nailed mm. completely why the ball speed or what the ball speed was like previously compared to what the ball speed should be which is exactly what i feel deep has uh, applied addressed addressed yeah. in these new physics yeah exactly it's got i think the ball what people are attributing to slow is actually weight right. i think correct and that's the difference like those like i've got a ball right here this is not light, right? This right. thing here is not light. And it, you know, you need that, that feeling of heaviness to it. And that look, inertia is one thing when you actually flip the ball and it can, like, has this feeling of continuance around the play field. But you look at the difference between um, Zen, uh, Zen regular um, physics versus the, um, uh, the, what they call it, the arcade the classic arcade physics and the way the ball flies around the play field in the Zen um, physics mode. It's very different to the way it behaves in a classic arcade. Again, and it's, it's closer arcade. to a ball gliding rather than a ball rolling. And there's yeah. the weight issue. A marble is going to glide and then kind of yeah. roll. 
a heavy steel ball is going to roll. It's not going to just slide across that's a play field. Right. That's right. What's interesting to do is if you um, put, I don't know if anyone's tried this, and uh, I can't try it myself because I don't have any um, four-star tables unlocked, so I don't have access to pro physics. But if you activate the Zen Zen exclusive members club ball, the one with the star on it and blue, you can really see the ball spin on that when you're playing with that ball. Um, and it might be interesting to compare what the ball does um, with that skin on versus what it does with um, just a regular like chrome ball skin because you might be able to see the differences quite apparently between the um, the classic arcade versus the Zen original. I'd be interested to know if that's a real physics representation, representation because the ball looked like it was spinning in Pinball Arcade. The ball did not spin. It was just a it was simulated fake, yes. look. Yeah. No, I think it does because um, uh, I, when, it, when it goes into a... Uh, I've noticed that the ball, it may not be fully accurate because when the ball is trapped on a magnet, um, you can actually see the ball spin while the ball is on a magnet. And when right. it's in a saucer, the ball will actually rotate when it's in a, um, a, a saucer as well. So perhaps it's not, but it would be interesting to test what it does because I can't do it. So, yeah, I don't have any of the new tables. I don't have any four stars yet. I've got four star. I've got all five of the new tables up to three stars, and mm. that's where they sit. And I'm I'm kind of of the mind to just let them sit, and because that way I'll play the challenges <laughs> when they actually populate. But then I'm also yeah. like, wait, am I going to get hosed? And they're not. Gonna, I don't know. Anyway, that's mm. that's neither here nor there. But I did want to kind of touch upon that. But I truly appreciate the new physics and yeah i think they're good yeah uh but yeah, that was that was an additional thing really that we had helped. yeah well i haven't really had a lot of like i really don't play anything other than challenges on um the arcade uh, on the android version of the williams pinball oh that's all so, i play on the app uh, no if i'm playing real pinball i'm playing it on pc steam yeah <laughs> yeah on steam so for that reason i haven't seen a lot of the new tables come around in the rotations like like i said like with all these challenges that we've been playing over the holiday period um I always seem to get Roadshow all the time. It just never changes for me when I reset the challenges. Okay. Like with the one token with the one token reset. Sure. Always Roadshow. Never anything else. Really bizarre. And I've got all the other tables to I think all the it could be because the other tables aren't yet two starred. Um, and that's why I'm not seeing them in. But normally if they're like special challenges, um, they open up those tables for the special challenges. Um but it doesn't seem to be happening for me. Yeah. Um, what else did Zen give us this year? Operencia. Yeah, but I'm thinking pinball. <laughs> pinball? Uh, uh, what else did they give? Uh, I think those were the main the main things, because nothing really happened mm. in FX3. Um, no, zero happened. No, certainly not on the original tables, but look, let's have a look at the new movie that's out. Uh, oh, <laughs> the new Star Wars movie. That's well, I... you know what Mel said, and that is that they're not dropping tables in time with them because no. they actually wanted to see the movies, so then yes. they could develop a story based on that. So I would say, come video release, you're almost inevitably yeah. going to get a new Star Wars table. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we're well or overdue. A new because they want to one or add... three. <laughs> And they want to add content to their um, their Steam line as well, and, like, and leverage that yeah. hard work that they put in for uh, not Steam Switch, um, and leverage all the hard work they put in to get that onto that that console platform. So they're going to want to do for sure another Star Wars um, multi-platform release, right? Um, in 2020 for sure. Uh, let's switch over to Zacharia. So mm. the our friends over at uh, Pixel Magic. They Magic Pixel. or Magic Pixel. I'm always going to say Pixel Magic. Magic Pixel. Um, let's see. So they completed their entire run of remake tables. Yes. Um, they upgraded their UI, which was a good long improvement. Long yes. Yeah. Long um, long they got put out on Switch, if I'm not mistaken, on Xbox. They're currently working on the PS4 version. They put out a new version for Android. Yes, it did. That updated. And also 
very nicely cross graded everybody who had um i think yeah they yeah i think they cross graded yeah they managed to work out a way of doing that which was yeah, great they figured it out mm -hmm. um so yeah zacharia was busy this year too they did a lot of improvements um if you check out that they communicate mainly by Facebook, so mm. uh, go subscribe to their Facebook page and you'll keep up on updates. They posted uh, an update during the holidays, basically saying, "Here's what we got planned for 2020." Uh, main thing being doing PS4 release and then also doing more of these uh, pro or premiums. What are, they, what are they calling them? Yeah, I can't remember what the well, it's. Yes, this, it, th these new tables. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the new ones. The ones that look like new sterns because they've got a big Correct. digital color display on them. Correct, which um, I actually so still haven't checked out uh, what the, the most recent release was. So I, I personally haven't had any experience with them yet. I haven't either. Uh, we need to get a key off, um, off our friends at um, Magic Pixel there to, yeah. see, to test them out so we can talk about them a bit, I think. Yeah. Oh, over in the, uh, in the chat box for our uh, Twitch stream... Uh, Gabura has mentioned the movie and Mandalorian, maybe. Oh yeah, interesting. Maybe that's that's Gabura. certainly yeah. a possibility. Yes, um, that uh, could be quite interesting. And then, oh, and then Pinball with Forty Five B says uh, Star Wars Episode One would be tricky. Yeah, I'm. I seriously wonder if they're going to go through the effort of doing any Pinball Two Thousand. I think. Well, I think we discussed what Pinball Two Thousand would look like. If it would look like a regular Zen it. table. <laughs> it would really did they just do away with the hollow projection and just do the projection directly onto the playfield? Yeah, um, that would be the only way I think that it would be the only way that would make sense to me. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. trying to simulate the hollow with just a black pit would make the the, the table look really short and odd, and yeah, I wouldn't be. It I don't would, know. yeah. Um, okay, here's a question for other things. Did Demon's Tilt come out this year, or was that the year prior? It, it has gone from, um, what do they call, uh, early access to GA in this year. Okay. So it's actually now a proper release, um, which is really cool. Um, and it's a, it's a really very interesting take on Pinball, that one. Like, uh, yeah. I, it's still, like, I go back to it every now and again. I go, yeah, you know what, this is really, this is really interesting. And then, uh, <laughs> I never know what the actual title is. Pinball Wicked. Uh, <laughs> the, yeah. the Black Flaggers Pinball. Uh, who knows what the official title of that thing is. It's still in early access, I believe. Um, yeah. But they have made a lot of changes uh, to it. Yes. Call it, call it code updates, if you will. Um, mm. Be interested to see when they actually finalize it, though. Yeah. When I played it last time, and albeit this was probably good six months ago now, it just... It felt a little bit repetitive in what you did. Maybe I was doing it wrong. It's quite possible that I was doing it wrong because I maybe didn't know the rules fully. But it just didn't feel like the modes were well developed. Um, there's yeah, that's been my complaint with it myself. It's there's a lot of flashing lights and a lot of chaos, and you throw the ball around a lot. But actually starting up anything or doing anything seems not super intuitive no, no yeah not particularly and that's why that's probably why i haven't touched it in six months because uh, i sort of played it i went okay that's nice and then i haven't played it since but the great thing about steam is you just leave your games on there and eventually they'll do an update that makes you go oh okay i might actually go and retry this again that's the beauty of it right right it's Absolutely. constantly changing yeah it's pretty cool um and then finally there's farsight who Despite Ooh. all their promises of there's a new table coming, there was no new table coming. There's no new table, <laughs> except for the newsletter, which some people did and didn't receive. And thank you to everyone in the um, the Digital Pinball Fans Forum for cross-posting that for people who didn't see the um, the thing, the announcement. But there's a new, a new, let's call it pinball game coming out, Pinball Soccer. Pinball Something Soccer, like it's it's a mobile app, and I was joking with Jared. I said, gee, I wonder if this is the uh, Alvin G. Soccer <laughs> just reskinned. Well, well, I wonder, because... Because yeah. they were developing it. I mean, they had every intention of putting it out. They just never got their head-to-head -head pinball working. That's what head-to-head -head was for. It was for that table. Exactly, specifically for that table. 
but they couldn't get the latency working out worked out for it like it was yeah. just too hard for them to try and do it real time so yeah it never saw the light of that in fact i think they, they actually had one they actually had a table in their studio i'm pretty sure oh yeah no they did i, I physically saw it um i think yeah. i even played it maybe yeah yeah um and I then i would be surprised i would be i would be putting money down on the fact that's what the layout will be <laughs> that, that, that's certainly my guess. And then I think mm-hmm. that the newsletter also made mention of there was an update to Pinball Cadet. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. Uh, I'm not sure what I haven't actually. I've uninstalled that a long time ago. Um, but yeah, um, I guess we should check that out. Maybe. So I'm uh, just saying, folks. In case it, ha- I mean, there's a reason why we haven't been talking about Farsight because I was just done. It, it, there's yeah. no there's no sense in speculating on things that aren't going to be happening. Um, yeah, it, it's as far as I'm concerned. And I did this a long time ago. I put a fork in it, <laughs> and mm-hmm. um, it was, it's well and truly done. Like there's nothing. They are moving on to other. Uh, they're adding value elsewhere. Yeah, like uh, I, they're not. They're not even pursuing the Gottlieb license anymore. If they were, they would have at least completely different tables for the Toy Shock physical digital pinball offering at Walmart, but they didn't. They just recycled the junk they've already got. Yeah, so, so um, th- that's what I'm saying. If, I know that there's a few that are still uh, holding out hope, but no, nah, I- I'm going done. to, I will be pleasantly surprised if all of a sudden they announce a brand new engine and a whole new deal with pinball, but they're they're truly done and over with with Stern. Um, they can't, yeah. and, and the reason why I say that is because it was made mention any of the titles that they want to do carry a huge, hefty licensing fee. And yep. yes, although Stern has now incorporated digital licensing into their car- current contracts, you still have to pay the licensing fee. It's basically preventing anybody from having to do what was having to be done, which is, you know, take the case of like Adam's family. You got to track down the actors, the movie studio, yeah, yeah. all the, you know, the music, all that stuff. Instead, it's just all in one nice ball, but you still got to pay for the ball. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. You you got to like fork over the fork over the Benjamins so you can get access to all the all the license stuff, the intellectual property. Correct. And then um, they made mention that of the Gottliebs, they don't want to make EMs, which is ridiculous. But okay, sure. So like someone else, Gottlieb, Gottlieb, go and I don't know who actually holds the license. Who who the actual? You know how um, uh, Williams Pinball is held by Scientific Games, right? Um, I, I think, I don't think, um, uh, what is it? Uh, <laughs> the company produces premier. The, mm, yeah. It's, uh, who is the licensing body that holds the Gottlieb license? That's an interesting question. Cause we, we haven't really had to look into that very much. I, yeah. I, I truly don't know. I don't know, but I don't think it's um, the pinball resource. I mean, the pinball resource got all of the um, the tooling. Yeah, and, they got all the um, parts, molds, and <laughs> stuff for the physical reproduction parts. But I don't think they actually got the intellectual property rights for it. They just got right to produce parts. So right. I don't think it's them. And I think if you have a look at the bottom of the Toy Shop digital cabinet, it still cites Gottlieb LLC. I think as the license holder. So I think there must okay. be an entity still that is somewhere is. Yeah, Gottlieb still that holds yeah. the license for it. So anyway, what that's else, what that's kind of to? someone needs to just approach them and say, "Hey, look, can we just like take this over? Like, just, <laughs> honestly, get get um, Magic Pixel to do it. They do a top job of reproducing all those. Just imagine what they could do with the Gottlieb license. What I, I, I honestly, career. Jared, think that we need to convince Magic Pixel of it first. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's because right. I have made mention time and time again to Mart. And he just kind of goes, well, we're really busy. And I'm like, why would you want to be busy on doing things that are just... Well, I mean, okay. On the one hand, if you're only dealing with your own creations, you're not having to deal with licensing, and you can do whatever the heck you want with it. But mm. um, why would you not want to get Gottlieb and take yourself to the next level? Just well, saying. Yeah. The the amount... I mean, the, the thing that's great about, uh, about Magic Pixel is that when they get a license, they absolutely utilize every last bit of that license to really drive a, a really well polished product yeah you know there's like the, with all their remakes and their new versions and their like premium versions which i think is what they're called now the premium tables you know no other like not even zen goes to that level of 
of reuse and reappropriation of license within the risk like the the boundaries of the license yeah there's um, no one else that does it so over on the uh, chat file there uh, pinball with 45b Mondial says Mondial international corporation is who is the galib license holder uh, interesting nice bit of sleuthing there pinball whiz yeah um all right that moves us into the coming year and we're gonna mm. dip a little bit so here's the deal obviously uh toy shock Tayo, whatever their company name is, they came out with that 12 and 1 pinball. Um, Right in time for the holidays. 399, 12 and 1, godly tables. It was Farsight uh, working with them. Um, I think the major complaint that I would have just on looking at it is the hideous bezel that surrounds it. It's gross. And Toy Shock are addressing it. Um, They're creating, at least, they're creating a black one um in their ones because what they've done is they've done a like the haunted house one was their essentially the alpha and then what they're doing is they're they're releasing different like cabinet art versions of the cabinet um uh in the new year to compete with the other ones which we'll be talking about shortly um coming out but i think they need to just like bump the bill of materials a little bit and just put a full screen in there because that bezel is ridiculous it is just horrible now the good news for them apparently completely sold out. Oh, is that right? Yes. Very nice. Uh, somebody well, just well, somebody just great. pointed that out that uh, as far as Walmart and I forget who the oh and Sam's Club those were the two uh, that were places retail places that were selling it um, completely sold out. So awesome, That's right? Good success for you. Uh, yeah. Apply now that. I'm happy about. That no, I'm that's it is good news because hey, it was a risk. Now that you know that it's not so much of a risk. Just refine. Yeah. Put a little more yeah. money into the product um, to make it look better and be better. Um, yeah. Because there's people complaining about flipper lag on that um, on the Toy Shock version of the cabinet. Some people aren't. Some people are saying it's up to a millisecond, uh, up to a second in lag. Oh, like, that there, would be unplayable. People, it's very, very hard. Like, there's some people going, look, you know, we have real pinball machines in the house and my kids can't play this game because the flipper lag is that bad on it. Like, it just throws their timing completely. You know, it's interesting because when I was... I I dealt with flipper lag a little bit back in the day when I was playing on the PS3, uh, Mm. playing TPA, and it was the difference between my TV and... Somebody else's. Well, well, I'm just saying there was there was lag, and, and I was playing on a projection, rear projection screen, and oh, there yes. was nothing I could do about the flipper lag. Um, yeah. And it was slight, but it was there. And the interesting mm. thing was, was I got used to it, and I learned yeah. to deal with it. And then when I flipped over to Steam, I had to relearn because all of a sudden now my timings were all too early because <laughs> yes. I was anticipating um, but You're doing I a lot reckon... of shoulder passes. <laughs> yeah, a lot of shoulder passes. Yeah. So I'm not. I mean, that might have been inherent in the game itself all along, um, and mm. it's just more noticeable with whatever screen that they picked. Um, that it wasn't, you know, it's, it's pronouncing the lag because there was plenty of people that had um, flat screen TVs that were saying that, oh, the lag is unplayable on. So. Um, okay, anyway, but yes, so they had great success. Well, then Jared goes and posts <laughs> posts in the uh, Digital Pinball Fans Forum a link to a YouTube video of mm. somebody saying that they have word that uh, the company that makes the one-up cabinets, um, was that Tastemakers? Uh, is that correct? Tastemakers, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, they are bringing to CES, which is the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas that happens every January, I believe the second week of January. Um, yeah, it's a very fan- soon, in other words. Yeah, and it's and folks, yeah. if you've never been, it's fantastic. Nuts. Fun. Go. Nuts. It's, I've been <laughs> twice, and it's it's a good time. Um, yeah. But basically, what they're going to be doing is they're not only bringing the new arcade cabinets that they're going to be producing, which I think I saw an image of like, it was either Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or The Simpsons, but four joysticks across. Um, mm. They're also doing coffee table cabinet uh, cocktail style 
Uh, they're calling this functional furniture is what they're branding this this product line as. Yeah, this new thing. putting refrigerators in the bottom of the uh, <laughs> of the cabinets. Um, yeah, which look, it get, it's a creative uh, way of not having to worry about a riser, um, isn't it? Right. But the main thing that he pointed out was they apparently are also going to be putting out a pinball cabinet mm. along the same line. And there's some interesting features with this one. So, Well, we don't know uh, any features, rumored. do we? <laughs> it's all guesswork. Well, this is rumored. And I think okay. this guy, the guy who did the video, um, uh, he was referencing a couple of podcasts of which the name explained me, but go and check out the show notes and watch the video and you'll see them um, linked in the uh, video. But the, the person that they had on one of these podcasts was suggesting a few features about the, the digital pinball cabinets. And... And it sounded like they were less suggestions and more, hey, I've seen this and I'm putting a thinly veiled speculation around this. <laughs> so um, that's, it, it, I think, that's what it seemed like to me. Um, so what they were suggesting is it will have a like a, a live back glass um, and it will maybe have, um, well, they say it will have a small, um, DMD in the way of a video screen. I think they were saying something like probably around seven inch, which isn't huge, just like a tablet size um, DMD. But hey, look, it's better than alphanumeric displays, right? Um, and that opens up the possibility for lots of different games um, that can use that tech. Um, and I think it will have, I think it's, they're looking at um just a little bit below 30 inches, I think, if memory serves me, Chris. That would pro um, I didn't watch that. I just watched the little screen, listened to the blurb, and then up popped the little tab of yeah. what they were thinking was going to be in, which was funny enough, I hadn't watched the video when I made comments on Jared's thread. And then I watched the video, and I'm like, hey, they're taking off the things that I th said that <laughs> would be good yeah. things to speculate about. Well, some of the things. Um, Pretty much, yeah. Um, um, well, let's just let's just kind of go. First off, the main speculation is, of course, what tables, what 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 company. Well, and as Jared pointed out, not many options. It's going to be Zacharia. Yeah. It's going to be Zen, or it's going to be Zen Williams. Right mm. off the bat, I can pretty much say it ain't going to be Zen, and here's why: if One Up is doing it, One Up is making they want real. They're making real, real licensed real stuff. Yeah, yeah, they're going after the nostalgia market. And yeah, if you if you put out, you know, Zen Adventureland, people are going to go, what the hell is that? They're not going to care. Um, no, but you not. put out Medieval Madness, people go, I remember that. In fact, <laughs> I'm playing it in the arcade now as a remade version. You know, right. That's so, going to drive sales. So there we go. It's either Zacharia or Zen. Well, Zacharia just made their announcement <laughs> about what to expect in 2020, and there was nothing that said, there's a surprise. No. Zen, Mel specifically in one of his tweets, said, we've got Holy Grail licensing. We've really excited about what's going on in 2020 and things are going to get wild. Yeah. So, hmm. <laughs> In other yeah, words, I'll, they got surprises. <laughs> I don't know. I think a physical pinball machine you can put in your home is uh, pretty wild, don't you think? Yeah, I would, I would say that's, that's pretty wild and kind of right up their alley. So, considering they do actually have a pedigree with cabinets, right? Um, yes. So that would be my that's that's our best guess. Obviously, is that uh, it's going to be Williams Pinball. Now, this is where now Jared, you put a price point of how much? Did you I guess? Think, well, maybe this is Aussie dollars, but I'm thinking like six ninety nine Aussie, which I think is too much <laughs> for too, too much US. Too much US. Well, Remember that you know the the three hundred what is it three ninety three ninety nine toy is toy shop plus add forty percent to that which is our current exchange rate here in Australia mm -hmm. and you've got six ninety nine okay like after after imports and uh, markup from probably a local retailer here that that did the arcade one ups was LD, I think so you know with their markup on it as well you know, six ninety nine is just probably what you'd be paying for that. Okay, because so, because my thinking was most of the one up machines are three ninety nine. Um, mm -hmm. Some have gone on sale for two ninety nine, 
the, that was more of like a holiday special. Some are a little yeah. bit more expensive depending on uh, how many buttons and joysticks they have going on. I think the most mm-hmm. expensive one was like 500. And to be honest, I think that's the sweet spot because if you go it's much about 500, you reckon? Yeah, because 500. That's what people are dropping on a on a new like whenever the new the PS5 comes out. That's it's going to be close to that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also if like if they make that home like if they make functional furniture like it's a bit hard to do that with the pinball cabinet, but like for functional furniture like that coffee table model, you know. I'd pay five hundred for that probably. Well, it that's going to be good. a lot more expensive, no doubt. I because probably, you are yeah. doing m- more functionality. But mm. I'm just thinking, if you're going for a, hey, that's a family fun item. V- you hit that five hundred dollar mark, you're still within that. Hey, it's fun for the whole family. You start going north of that, then it becomes a luxury item. And yeah. I don't think that that's one ups market right now is getting into a luxury item. Well, this might be what they're doing with the functional furniture aspect of it. Maybe, yeah. But for a pinball game cabinet, I think that you're pushing it. And I don't see why you would need to actually be more expensive than that anyway. Mm. Um, I think, and, and me and Jared also had a little bit of discussion about this, and I'll kind of I'll touch upon it a little bit more, but. Uh, I think that they need to institute plug and play uh, options for these things that would Modular obviously upgrades. that would obviously increase the price of the cabinet, but it at least you start at a base rate that's more affordable for people that want to get into this kind of thing. Um, the other mm. thing that I'm wondering is how many tables will they put per cabinet? Because that's the well, other what's thing. The, um, what's the, I guess, the the prior art with Arcade 1-Up? Is it like one game per cabinet? No, Normally? three. They've been putting three. about three games per cabinet. Oh, okay. So like, for instance, the one that's sitting in my home right now is Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 2 Tournament Edition, and some other version of Street Fighter. Turbo, probably. Yeah. So it's it's three. Um, if you bought Pac-Man, I think it was Pac-Man, uh, Ms. Pac-Man, and I don't know what else, but I, I know Galaga. It's three different versions of Galaga. Um, hmm. okay. So, well, how would they group them then? Like, how if if we're speculating that it will be Williams Pinball, they'd probably have to work out how they group the tables, and they have to be quite careful because of the the interface requirements, right? Exactly. So, what I'm thinking is, a group them by Williams or Bally. Because then you can mm-hmm. put proper Williams badging on yes. the thing, but that would probably be kind of minor. You could probably skirt around that. Not a not mm. a big issue. Um, more importantly, I think it regards: uh, does the game have a plunger, or does it have a button plunge? So, like Medieval Madness doesn't have an actual button. I mean, an actual plunger. Neither does Monster Bash. They just have a button that you push that launches the That's ball. Right. Um, That's right. That's right. So why not pair games that are all alike in that manner? And save the cost of having a plunger rather than having to put a plunger and a button. A button. And confusing yeah. matters. Yeah. True. Um, Although, you know, we're talking in a bill of materials, we're talking $3 extra. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's not so, much. So, not a big deal. <laughs> but let's hope they choose a better plunger hardware than the one that was in the, the toy shop cabinet because apparently it's rubbish. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it, it looks not like cool. a toy plunger. It really does. Yeah. Um, I think if they're going to do it right, uh, and look, Arcade One Up seems to use pretty decent arcade hardware in the cabinets. I know a lot of people have swapped them out for real arcade buttons, etc. But they, which they that's look the other thing is not quality. difficult to do on theirs. Um, yeah. I mean, for instance, the joysticks. If you want to get a top quality joystick to put in there, well, they're only twenty bucks um, yeah, that's right. on Amazon. So go spend your twenty bucks and put one in. Mm, you know, that's right. They're swappable. And people have. I think what are people doing on the um, the toy shop cabinets to address some of the slipper lag is they're actually putting in leaf switches um, into the buttons. And it, it looks like it's making a difference um, to to lag. So putting okay. in a leaf switch with it, like with the contacts adjusted very finely is giving you a more of immediate um, flipping. So it could just be the buttons are really crap. <laughs> that they put, that it, they put it, the it very cabinet. well could be <laughs> yeah so you know that's that's definitely one one thing that the folks over in um the toy shock uh, official fan page have been sharing uh that seems to work all right so you give that a go if you've got one of these cabinets 
The the other thing is that like I, said, I don't believe they'll do anything close to a twelve in one table. It wouldn't make any sense. Um, no, from a business perspective, because the idea is, hey, you want people to units. have a couple of these, not just yeah. buy one. Um, obviously, it's not going to have internet connectivity either. Uh, oh, maybe, maybe not. Like, I don't you think, think about it. If they're using if they're using Williams Pinball, um, and they actually put the full Williams Pinball experience on this, and the, you know you can actually play it. Like, sure, it's not a mobile app, but I'd say for the price point, they're not going to be putting a Steam box in there. Let's be honest. They're probably going to be putting a mobile build in it, um, if it is then. So, uh, you know, having that online play capability and getting ad revenue from physical pinball machines in your house, uh, that's I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen because it's not it's not in any of the one up machines right now. It's an added cost and an added headache. If anything, they put a USB port in there so that if a new update comes out, great. You download the update, you plug in the USB, boom, it downloads. There you go. Um, There might be challenge mode might be in there, but I think by and large it's going to be pinball and that's it. You reckon just standalone pinball? Yeah. No, that's that's the idea. Is it's not trying to be anything that is on your console or on Steam. It's trying to be what it was like to walk into an arcade. Yeah, true. The intro Gabura was saying maybe a touchscreen would solve the problem of you know being able to use the mobile style interface on there. But uh, I think what they do is they'd reskin it and simplify it so they'd make it button presses. Um, yeah, I agree. I think it's going to be button presses. Um, and again, if you're if Navigation is easy. You know, you mm. pop up with a main screen. If there's only three tables to rotate with, which, by the way, what did Zen do for their that big beast of a machine with all the electronic finery that they were going to be putting into Dave and Buster's? They created they exactly that thing. Yeah, <laughs> and strangely enough, yeah. and what did Zen do? They only put three tables on it because they didn't Correct. want to over stimulate or, or give too many choices to everybody. Yeah, in before the skin on Dave and Buster's commercial pinball cabinet. <laughs> That's yeah. what it's going to be. Yeah. yeah. Um, something else that I think will be addressed, I don't think it's going to have that gigantic ugly bezel by any stretch of the imagination. No. And there's a real simple solution to preventing the screen from getting damaged. Put a piece of glass over it. Yeah, or Perspex if you don't want to spend the money on it. Like good quality Perspex will do the same thing. What is that? Perspex. I don't know what the... Oh, okay. Yeah, like a, a plastic sheet, basically. Okay. Clear plastic sheet. Um, the only problem with that is people will try and clean it. it, and then they're going to scratch it. <laughs> well, yeah, but, you know, it's not in an arcade. It's in a home. So people won't be using, like, arguably they won't be using, um, you know, nasty chemicals on it. Yeah. Um, I'm just thinking about what happens, you know, everybody that's ever bought a protective screen for, you know, whether it was their PSP or even the Nintendo Switch, eventually it gets nasty unless you bought one of the nice glass, you know, those really thin glass covers that static electricity attached to the screen. Um, Oh, yes. Yeah. But point being... The thing too is shipping shipping weight as well, remember. So Right. Point being, I don't think it's going to have that nasty bezel. I think it's going to look like a proper pinball machine. I think if, the, if they're going to do a cabinet, they're going to do as close as possible to edge to edge. Yeah. Um, like, we, you know, I'm thinking like, you know, your traditional PC monitor with maybe a mm, half an inch bezel around it, you know, like let's say two centimeter bezel around it, and then some sort of lockdown bar that you can you can rest your hands on. And that's literally all you need. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing I've, I saw in all the, the Toy Shock fan page is that some of these units, when they shipped, they were coming and the screen was like out of alignment because of the way it was strapped to the underside of the bezel. So, you know, there there have been some interesting things going on with these cabinets when they've been shipping. So the other thing is that they're going to like anything they do to make this cabinet look cosmetically good, they're going to have to work out like, the the pros and cons for shipping weight and and actual like robustness in shipping as well um because you know if you put a glass pane in a screen in a cabinet that doesn't have that glass pane rigidly secured you're going to end up with a lot of 
like shipped cabinets with some problems. I think when they when they end understandable, up. yeah. So you know, I think that's that's a concern. I also question whether there'll be a full video of back glass. Uh, to me, it's unnecessary if you're only doing three, um, three cab or three tables per. You Zen, just have generic branding, right? Well, Zen already did their art for the the volumes. You just put mm. that up as the back glass. I do think that they'll have it'll be either a true DMD or well, highly unlikely it'd be a true DMD. Um, it'll be a small screen that'll have the DMD overlay, basically. Uh, is what I, I think, would imagine. Yeah, I think it'll be a little mini LCD. Maybe that's what they were suggesting that it has an LCD in the back grass. Maybe it's just the little DMD. That's size what I would. LCD. That's what I would think. It would. And make look, I sense. think that'd be perfectly acceptable. You know. Oh, absolutely. For, for a home use only machine, like you look at the examples of, um, you know. The, the stern, the pin models that they bring out for home use only, they actually have alpha, alphanumeric displays in theirs. And I think in the later models like Star Wars, they've actually got a really small seven-inch display in them now. Like they've got okay. that LCD display in them now. So it's probably going to be the same the same bill of materials they'll be using. You know, really, yeah. uh, they'll be using that display. Yeah. So that's why I'm thinking. Oh, and then the last thing is not buttons for nudging. That's just ridiculous. That's ridiculous. It, it literally no. cost me, I think, fifteen. It's somewhere between fifteen and twenty bucks to buy the accelerometer that's inside that mini cab. Yeah, and that the was micro retail. cab there. That wasn't like. And that was retail. Shenzhen. Yeah, that was retail. Yeah. That wasn't Shenzhen when you buy a thousand of them. So, no, no, and it's you know. it's tiny. It's it's literally like two postage stamps big, yeah. and that's it. Yeah. So there is no reason why you can't have that in there. Um, I mean, would you want a plumb bob? Hey, that'd be ideal. But I don't think that Zen is even set up to understand a plumb bob. No. Well, that's what the accelerometer is just that. It yeah. is a digital plumb bob. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so here's the deal. I, I, that's why I'm saying, obviously, a pinball cab has a little bit more going on than an arcade cab. So I think the price point is going to be 100 bucks more. Uh, then, which is what I I'm saying. So, so four ninety nine is what I'm guessing. Um, mm. But here's where I want plug and play, and that is that then if they sold a rumble motor for those tables that have rumbles, that yep. you put it in and you just plug it, boom, it goes. And I'm not talking about a true pinball rumble motor either. Um, this is something that just have them make that that does the same functionality, but it's also uh, prioritary to their software and cabinet, right? It's basically mm. what Arcuda was We're wanting doing, to do. Yeah. Wanting to do, yeah. Have um, plug-and-play modules that you can upgrade the machine with. Which but then but mean... that won't work in anybody else's <laughs> cab. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, so do, do a rumble motor. Do uh, solenoids so that when you hit the flipper button, you feel that smack of a solenoid That's firing. Not... Same thing with the pop bump, uh, the pop bumpers. That there's a solenoid that simulates um, that kind of thing, you know, because then you could sell a pack of rumble and solenoids, and it's an extra hundred bucks for those that want it. So you'd actually sell these as like, so you'd have your base table, and then sitting right beside that base table in Walmart, you'd have a box of extras. Precisely. And you'd sell that. Precisely. So you wouldn't sell them individually because imagine like the, no way Walmart would want to carry this random box of like a, a, a different product line for each thing. It would be like like that. It's either a you if you want vibration and you want solenoids. You, you, uh, and, sorry, if you want vibration, and you don't want solenoids. Too bad. You get right. No, you get the whole pack. It's one thing. Mm. Yeah, it's essentially base model plus enhancements. And the reason why I say that that can work twofold. One, one up sells risers for their arcade cabinets so you don't have to hunch down and play. And yeah. they sell those things for I I kid you not, it's a it's just a wood box. I think they sell yeah. it for like 60 bucks, 60 or 80 bucks. It's really Yeah, no, it's it's absurd for what it is, what they sell like how it How much for. it would have cost them to make it. It's that, right. that's a huge markup. Right. Yeah. Uh the other thing is think about again, when you buy a PS4, it only comes with one controller. Oh, you want another mm. controller? Well, that's going to be $60. <laughs> yeah, right. You know? So the cost, is, for those that just want an entry, it's there. For those that want a complete experience, then you pay a little bit more, 
and you have it, you know. You get um, it, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so that would be what I would, I think would be cool if they did, whether or not they would actually go that far. Again, who knows? Who knows? Um, it would be it would be a, a good way to keep the cost point low for those families who's, who just want Belly Williams tables in their home and can't afford $4,000, you know. Right. Because, you know, I, I don't know. I If they did this and they did it well, uh, it might be something that I consider. Like just, It'd be tempting. <laughs> it'd be really tempting. But when you put the Aussie tax on it, it'll be close. Like, uh, I think the RK 1UP cabinets, when they landed here, uh, what is it now, two years ago or one year ago, when the Aussie dollar was around 70 cents to the, to the US, they were, I think they were around the $500 mark, Australian. Okay. But with it at 60 cents now, like, I think if if we even see these plus the extra cost for the extra bill of materials with the display and the new cabinet stuff and the extra size of this thing, because it's going to be a bit bigger than a regular cabinet, I would imagine, um, from a shipping dimensions perspective, well, I think we're talking seven or eight hundred dollars Australian. I think that's yeah. what we'd be looking at. Like, I'd I'd love it if somehow they would keep the costs down, but apparently with Toy Shock, um, because they're based out of China and Shenzhen, they will uh, be shipping from Singapore in 2020 all of the like the 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 ones for our region in Australia. So that could keep the cost lower than having to ship it from, you know, over in the US or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. I'm surprised that that so, hasn't happened already. But again, yeah. they may not have known the market. Now that they know what the market, that there is a market for it, um, yes. it, it makes more sense to, okay, now we'll expand. That's right. What I'd like to see, though, I think they need to, like, they, they should just spend the money and just put leaf switches in for the buttons. Like, it's not that much more. One of the funny things is, like, as a side story, in some of the um, the actual real pinball machines, like Doctor Who and um, all of the Belly Wounds machines that actually had optical switches um, for the flipper buttons, they had, like, this proper board and it had, like, little, like, opto that made the flippers go um, and sense that they were open. One of the first things that Ed does um, at um, the Pinball Shack here in Brisbane is he takes those things out, throws them away, and puts a leaf switch in because they are just so unreliable and i think the buttons that are in the I, i'd like this confirmed but it looks like the buttons are so low profile in the um the the toy shop cabinets they might actually be like an optical sensor in them i don't okay. know if they're micro switch and if that's the case mm. junk those junk them if that's the case because they're rubbish um get rid of them uh, so if they can like put proper leaf switches in, which really, if they're well adjusted, you don't need to worry about adjusting them again with the amount of use they're going to get. That that will be a much better interface feeling. Yeah. You'd have a real flipper button feeling then. You yeah. know. Now the one whole wrinkle in this whole scenario is that in this video, another company was mentioned. <laughs> uh, what was the name of that company? Uh, was it? Uh, at digital, at games, at Sorry. games. Game. That they're apparently also going to be coming out with a pinball cabinet, yes. which begs the question: So, what tables are they putting out? Yeah, well, <laughs> we were saying in the back, who's going to get the sloppy seconds? But it's not really sloppy seconds because whoever doesn't get Zen still has a pretty good option to choose from. Like we're not talking shabby stuff at all with um, uh, with the Magic Pixel. Like that's a good product to put on a pinball machine. Yeah, um, but I mean, I really think I would be surprised if that's who it is, because Zacharia yeah. is. I mean, let's let's face it; it's niche. They are niche. <laughs> they're, they're niche in a niche industry. Yeah. So uh, there's not, and yeah. there's not because those tables were not readily available anywhere in the U.S. They were basically a European thing. They there's were. next to no nostalgia factor on them. You might as well put out Zen originals. You may as well. Well. You may as well put out Zen Originals. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? A, a completely separate license for the same manufacturer. Right. That that would be line. that would be rather interesting. And if I right. I would say if Zen went that route, then you probably would have like twelve tables to a 
to a cab a pack oh yeah you'd have to like to get around the whole well i don't know these tables what what are they right you know but you know you put some popular licenses on there like the doom license uh well hold on hold the fort hold the fort what if you put all the star wars tables and what if you put all the marvel tables imagine that yeah that would sell that would sell that would sell. Imagine seeing Marvel and all that branding and livery on the box sitting there on the floor of your Walmart or your LD. Like you'd be going, huh? Marvel pinball tables? Shut up and take my money. Dude, if, if you know? Zen is doing a two-pronged attack, then that's pretty bold. <laughs> that, that's it's just double, like... Same manufacturer, two different product lines, two different companies. That would be intrigue. That would be one hell of a hedge a bit, wouldn't it? Oh my gosh, <laughs> that would be, yeah, big time. I'm not seen. So uh, at games, at games are the people who um, uh, produce uh, a number of different things. If you have a look at their website, they've got a lot of those um, connect the um, console up to your TV and play. Like we've got like the, the Bandai Namco Arcade Blast. We've got Star Flashback Blast and things like that. So they are TV console games like your, um, you know, your... In the same vein as the um, uh, Sega Mega Drive uh, or Sega Genesis plug and plays. But the one product that's different from all of those is their Legends Ultimate Home Arcade. Um, and uh, Ah, from- now I recognize what you're talking about. They're yeah. the ones that are competing directly with 1UP by having a buttload right. more games yeah. in their cabinet. That's correct. And they're, non, they're not shabby titles. They are well-known games in this cabinet and this cabinet is interesting it's a two-player cabinet it's got potentiometers so it's got the arkanoid style um, potentiometer controls that allow you to go left and right analog it's even got a trackball in the middle of it so you can play tron centipede and and tron so tron actually has a trackball and all sorts of stuff going on it so it's it's got a lot of hardware attached to it and what is its price point um, well, unfortunately, it's sold out on the website, but I think that P-Dub, um, uh, on P-Dub's arcade, uh, who is Patrick Walton, uh, so not um, Don Walton, as I originally referred to him in the um, podcast last, and I had to apologize to him in chat because I got his name wrong. Sorry, Patrick. Um, so Patrick's got a review of this product uh, up there, and it's, there's pros and cons to it, um, and there's some things that would be nice to um, have fixed up in the next iteration of it but and next iteration i'm you can pretty much guarantee that that at games are going to be bringing out another one of these in 2020 to compete with all the other um home furniture products coming out so you know it's uh i think it was a little bit more expensive i think it was around the 500 dollars mark although i think patrick could probably confirm that if he's uh, listening What's what's interesting about this is, again, going back to Arcuda, they, this is what they were doing commercially, putting out commercial Mm. tables, and they were paying the actual license fees associated with these titles. I'm Mm. assuming that this is the case that 1UP has been doing also, that they're actually paying the true license fee, uh, for these, not just putting in a MAME uh, version? Mm, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure technically what they're running these on. I don't know. There certainly wouldn't be original boards. They would have to be emulations because they wouldn't have 12 boards in there um, because each board is quite... Well, no, I don't, know what, I don't know what the Legends cabinet is doing, but I'm saying the 1UP cabinet. Yeah, I'm not sure. Because if you're they... only having three titles and they're all very similar... You in nature, them on the same motherboard, exactly, or custom board. It seems like that's what they've done with um, the Toy Shop cabinet. It's using uh, what I think no one's really been able to confirm this either way. I know Patrick and I have been having a chat offline about the hardware that's inside the Toy Shop digital cabinet, and it's really hard to get technical specs information from the boards and stuff. They look like commercial off-the-shelf mini PCs. But there's little to no information about what the mini PCs are. You can we can work out what the monitors are, which are generally standard monitors that are used in all of the, um, I think the RK One Up 
um, monitors are the same as the ones that are in the toy shop. So they're from the same monitor family, but the actual PC that's driving this, it's, it's hard to find information about. But that suggests that it still is some sort of custom, some sort of board that stores the ROMs on it because there's no SD card on it. There's no removable drive like you see in some of the dodgy um, Chinese import um, multi-game cabinets. So it looks like it's a it's sort of custom. I, I lean towards custom. I would imagine so, but I think so because it's cheap. It's cheap for them to produce custom um, cabinet, and it's more reliable. So if they're producing their own um, actual circuitry for this, and it's a floated board, it's going to be more reliable than like using a a PC, for example, um, and trying to power these things. So, well, here's my plea. <laughs> hey, uh, one up. We'd love to review this thing when it comes out. We can only have it on loaner. That's fine. Be happy to yeah. ship it back to you. But let's get our fingers on it. Wouldn't that be nice? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, it would. Um, of course, our friends at Zen, too, if you have any pull. Huh? 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 Yeah? Yeah, that's right. If you could accidentally ship one of those things to La Habra. Um, or, or down well, here to again, we're assuming it's Zen that's going to be involved. Watch it, totally not. <laughs> well, I think I think go uh, put two, two and two together. I reckon it probably is. Right. I mean, but, we're yeah. we're we're doing what we love to do here. This is a proper speculation podcast, which we have not had in some time. <laughs> oh, we do love it. Like, and the thing is that, like, when we, it seems that when we speculate, we often get it right. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and we can kind of tell because we hear crickets. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there is zero action. I, I I tweeted about this in like just casually before I even saw this news. Uh, it's back to Zen about you know what would what would be really cool to get in 2020 in their tweet stream. I said, you know what, you guys should counter with the digital pinball cabinet. I think this market's going to be huge in 2020. Crickets. Yeah, <laughs> not a single response back in the uh, tweet thread, and that could mean that they didn't see the comment. Of course, I mean they're going. Ooh, can't really uh, talk about that yet. So yeah, I'm just I'm just <laughs> pleading with you, the 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 company tastemakers. Uh, hi, we're the Blockade Pinball Podcast, the premier digital pinball podcast on the web. Trust the us. Internet. Zen has yeah. even said so. Uh, so that's right. Tastemakers meet tastemakers. The podcast, yeah. right? You know, hey, hook us up. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Jared, make sure you at them. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So if anybody yes. does happen to go to CES this year, um, take pictures we, if you're there. Take pictures and then and send share them it with our us. way. We'd love to see them. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And I know that, I mean, shoot, that even goes to, I'm sure that uh, some of our more tech uh, Twitter friends of the nature of, like, say, Jeremy Williams, I would have no doubt would be at CES. Um, oh, yeah. Hey, send us pictures. So, for sure, I know that um, Patrick is going to be there. Patrick Walton um, from the Toy Shock fan page will be there at CS. So, like he he's going to be there on the booth, I think, actually helping out. So he's probably going to be the one to give the most up to date pictures. I'll be stalking the Facebook page for pictures, official pictures from him. Yeah, yeah. Because I sure. would I would seriously love to get my hands on uh, the Toy Shock cabinet. Also, uh, just. To get a feel for it, just so that I know yeah. what it feels like, so I'm not just talking out my butt based off of pictures and what other people are saying, but yeah, look, me my too. own. But I'd, yeah. I'd like to get the um, the second iteration of it because I think exactly. the ones that we're going to be seeing in Australia when they eventually come here down to Eldy, because they have confirmed they're going to be doing it in 2020 for us down here. They're going to have black bezels. That hopefully they're going to have a little bit of a bigger monitor. Hopefully they're going to address the probably hopefully put better cabinet buttons in there to address the lag issues. Yeah. You know, just just little things. And if they did that and they keep the price point the same, look, it's for 12 and 1. Like, all the people that have got these and, like, they're sharing to the, the Toy Shock official fan page and they're going, look, you know, most of them are going, the kids love it. Like, everyone that's come over there for Christmas Day and, and over the holiday period there, they're just nonstop playing it. They love it. So well, and it's certainly a sight better than those, you know, cheese ball plastic oh, where yeah. the flipper is directly connected to the button, you know, yeah. um, that were you like, know, really, that's pinball. Exactly, it's great. Like from that perspective, like the kids are having a ball. For those kids who don't know a lot about pinball, and for those families who don't know a lot about pinball, and 
don't have access to real pinball, they have zero problems with the toy shop product. Like yeah. they love it. But for those people who do have experience with pinball and for those people who perhaps have more advanced taste requirements, it doesn't really seem to be the product for them at the moment with the current configuration. So, you know, if they can make some subtle improvements and you guarantee they will to bring the product in line with the other products in 2020 coming out, it could actually stand up as a pretty decent offering, I think. Yeah. All right, so we've made our uh, shameless plea to get one of those, um, or both yeah. of these configurations. Anything, it'd be all cool. of them. All of them. All, all of them. Yeah. We say. Um, yes. Okay, yeah. we're well, gonna. I will make room. I will make room. <laughs> I can easily. Uh, yes, that's not a problem. Um, I'm going to move on to uh, just the final bit here, which is I uh, hooked up this gigantic monitor that's sitting in front of me right oh, now. Oh yeah. Um, that uh, I'm not. I didn't even measure what size it is. It's got to be at least a 28 um, inch. But the beautiful thing is, it rotates and goes into portrait uh -huh. mode. And so I was finally able to actually play Zen with in portrait mode, leaned back a little bit, probably about 30 degrees, leaned back with mm. the micro cab. And it feels really good. Does it? Yeah. <laughs> and then I wound up, I found out how to put the DMD on the second screen. So I was able to do that. But truth be told, view eight for the Williams tables works great. Because since I can't have the table, or since I can't have the monitor completely flat, um, it's it's raked quite a bit. Yeah. Well, that matches then the rake of view eight. And you got the DMD up there. And it's much bigger than if you're playing in landscape mode. View eight, yeah. So it works out really, really nice. That's what I'm playing all the Williams tables in. Is that so view eight's the one with the DMD in view all the time? Yes, correct. Yes, um, right. works out really well. Um, and Circus Volterra looks amazing on it. Oh, yeah, it would it's almost like it's designed for cabinet play, really. That right, kind of table isn't right. It? Yeah, um, right. I don't mind in the least bit the illusion being spoiled when all of a sudden it goes into a magnification of, of something or shows me something, uh, you know, animation wise, because mm. I'm not fooled. <laughs> I'm not yeah, looking at a cabinet. You no, know it's so, just digital pinball. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking, I'm looking at a PC build with a, a, you know, a monitor. Um, the Zen regular tables, there's where I'm like, where's my view eight. So come on, Zen, make a view mm. eight. They, you re that they, they need that hard to do. Yeah. It wouldn't be that difficult to do, and it'd be nice to be able to have that because now I'm used to that, and then I got to go back to regular, and I throw the DMD over to the other side. Here's the plea that I have. Um, I already had help with somebody getting me to get the DMD over there. That was a task that I didn't understand because it's not very intuitive how to do all this stuff. Yeah. Uh, the back glass art. Um, I got linked to a page where a whole bunch of backlash art is, but I'm still not sure of all the processes of where to drop any of the files. So if anybody out there is a cabinet person, hey, Greg from Spacey's Arcade. Um, <laughs> Hello, friend. <laughs> <laughs> how about uh, uh, sending me over a step-by-step -step idiot's yeah. guide to putting uh, backlash art on the second screen? I'd greatly appreciate it because it seems to me that the info is kind of scattered about or if somebody can just link me to where the proper info is but um i'm having flashbacks of visual pinball uh just oh. with just with That's all the i and it's it's not that it's particularly complicated it's just that you kind of have to know exactly where to put the stuff and what to do with it um i'm fine resizing my screen that's easy enough to do within the uh, interface of Zen Pinball, but mm. it's just where to put it in the local files because I get kind of twitchy when I have to start digging under the hood for that kind of stuff. So, yeah. my cabinet friends, uh, if you can send to either via Twitter or blah blah blockade at gmail.com uh, an email with kind of a step by step instruction, I would greatly appreciate it because. Absolutely, being able to flip this monitor, rotate it, stand up, and play that cabinet uh, the way it was meant to be played is pretty fantastic, and I enjoyed it greatly. So, I want to enjoy no, it greatly more. And uh, as an aside, I the monitor that I've got here that I'm doing the podcasting on it's on a it's on a mount as well, and it's not a massive monitor. I think it's only like a 18 inch or something like that, but it does pivot 
and I've for a long time I've been hesitating doing um, a portrait orientation for it because it feels like a bit of a, a, a stuff around to actually get it working right in Windows because you've got to go into your settings, you've got to flip the orientation, you've got to do it, and then if you want to change it back for like regular like Steam games and stuff, you then got to do it all over again. It doesn't seem to be a way to just have a one click button to flick the profile. Um, Wait, you're t- you're talking about for FX three? Uh, yes, but generally just setting it up so it, it works. Well, um, okay, so here's the deal, though. In FX3, there's a little pinball cabinet up at the top. You click yeah. that, it'll... You get a key. Well, you and you, so you get the key, but once you have the key, then you can set up the monitor how you need it to, to be set up. But the point is, is that if I click it again, it goes back to regular landscape mode. Uh, integration. There's nothing right. about. I don't go into Windows and rotate the monitor. It just works. It, it, you just click the you just click the pinball cab up at the top of because then it knows you're going into cabinet mode, and yeah, then right. it will orient the screen properly. So it basically takes all the settings and offsets that you've set up in the configuration. You have to tell it to rotate uh, in your initial uh, setting up. You have to tell it to rotate the screen 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 260 right. degrees, whatever you know direction it needs to be set. Um, yeah. But that's it. And then every single time you click that button, it'll it toggles back and forth basically. Right. Okay. So it's it's, so it's it's quick to do in Zen Pinball. It's FX3. quick to do in Zen Pinball. I have no idea what it's like to do in TPA. I'm not going to find out. Um, and and uh, I have Demon's Tilt. I know Demon's Tilt has a um, a setting to go portrait, and it'll just in app you can just click it and it'll go portrait. Yeah, I'll have um, to try that. And I haven't tried it in uh, Zacharia either. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they they have support for cabinet mode. They definitely have support well. for it. Yes. Yeah. So it seems like a lot of the pinball apps on Steam will have a one-click or mostly one-click solution to do it. So I should try it as well. I don't, I don't have a, uh, a pinball cabinet with buttons, but I can certainly elevate the screen to like a pinball machine height and sort of orient my, my buttons, and orient my um, my laptop screen as like the, the DMD sitting below it's, it's like instead of above because sure. I can't get it that high. And that would be pretty decent. Yeah, because I don't have my screen above by any it's, – it's over to the side. So, yeah. um, but it's it, not, it it's not much difficult. I mean, there's not, to me, it's not much difference from doing that to look at the DMD to doing that to look at the DMD. I mean, again, That's right. I'm not going for a purist no. version. Then let's be serious. It's a lot cheaper doing it the way you're doing it. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot cheaper. So yeah. And from that respect, it's a very cheap way of, of doing it. Um, so that's, that's, that's kind of neat. And one of these days, my friend also, um, like I said, I'm storing a bunch of his stuff while he's in transition and moving. Mm. Um, that's why I'm being able to, he, he, he's the one that said, use it while I'm not using it. So I'm like, because electronics, electronics need to be used. Otherwise yes. you, you run into trouble. We're doing the same. We're babysitting an 80 inch LED TV. Oh, bummer. <laughs> yeah it's really hard like it's I, I want to i want to go out there and commandeer it for a day and set up my my gaming laptop on it and just play games on it all day but i can't do that i do have however my 41 inch um tv in my room at the moment not connected up because it would look ridiculous on my table <laughs> but there's always that that i could actually play games on which would be pretty amazing but anyway, he also has a, a full Oculus Rift setup, um, wow. okay. and I might might plug it in. Though here's the problem: I don't have any Oculus or any VR games, games and all I want to play is pinball. That's all I would want to play anyway. I don't have. Mm. I never bought any of the Zen VR because I didn't have you the setup. Have um, I have his computer also, but I don't really want to plug that whole thing in just to mm. do that. So we'll see. I don't know. I would, I really, I never did get a proper, uh, I never got a chance to play the micro cab with the VR headset. Mm. So I'd be very interested in checking that out. Um, it's just a matter of, do I bother hooking up his computer or not? Um, yeah, but it would be, it would be cool to check out, um, properly on my terms with it set up to my height and play distance and everything else like that. So we'll see if I get around to it or not. Mm, yeah, right. Um, 
Yeah, oh, yeah. so <laughs> Gebera says uh, on wireless Oculus Quest Zen is amazing. Yeah, this isn't the wireless version. This is a little bit older. And my problem was it had a little bit of a screen door effect when I did yes. play it. Um, and I am a resolution freak. Uh, so right. there, to me, although the reality of it is pretty cool, the resolution is a hindrance. If I can't read inserts, it drives me nuts. Um, nuts. Yeah. So he did give you a tip about where to put those uh, uh, DMD files, uh, the um, the back glass files for you. So yeah, um, try that. Uh, Anyhow, yeah, I still want. St- I still want just a dummies guide. <laughs> yeah, give me. In this I folder, just, put it here. Because that's what I've already seen. I've seen various posts where people are like, oh, you just put it here. Oh, you just give me a step by step guide. Just treat me like an idiot and I'll be happy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, folks, that is it for uh, for Blockade in the year 2019. We will see you and, again in the year in 2020. Fact, for this decade. Yes. For yes. This decade. As far yes. as we're concerned, this decade. <laughs> um, yes. And. Uh, Beyond that, next time we podcast, not quite sure. Um, it's it's kind of hit and miss with my schedule right now. Yeah. And also whether there's anything to actually podcast about. So yeah. we, at the very least, try and come on every two weeks. Um, yeah. You know, if there's a lot going on, obviously we do it weekly. But at the if you see us popping on for the sake of popping on, it's just because we want to say hi and uh, communicate with you all. Um, yeah. And apparently it's also time for me to do some new videos, uh, regarding the new tables on the app, uh, and post those YouTube. So I might get around to doing that too. We'll see. Yeah, true. Hey, also don't forget at the moment, there's a holiday. If you haven't already started spending your Zen coins on it, there's a, uh, there's a holiday, um, uh, promo going on, on the, um, Williams mobile app, William pinball mobile app. Um, you got a chance to get some serious table parts if you're playing it at the moment. I've probably n- not played um, Williams Pinball as much as I have in the last three days just to try and get table parts built up. It's a really fast way of doing it, and I would encourage you to drop your token to reset the challenges um, and, and get some more table parts because it's worth the token in this particular case. You get at least two table parts, sometimes more. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I did that um, for sure. And then I uh, started doing the, it's a thousand tickets for, for the loot 10 box. table parts, I think, for the loot box. Yeah, that's 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 worth it. I was um, at 48,000 tickets. I'm now down to, I think, 8,000 tickets because between, <laughs> well, it cost me 15,000 tickets just to upgrade all five tables to uh, three stars, mm. which I'm now at and the other portion of tickets was used just to get the remaining table parts and i'm yeah. kind of i'm not spending it to get all the way to table f- to four parts because i'm still just like hey it's kind of fun to play the challenges and get parts because once i get all the parts i kind of stop playing the app so yeah hey zen how about making table parts available in the regular daily challenges yeah that's right it, it will be very sweet yeah but yes I'm, I'm in the same boat i'm having the same problem in the daily challenges um but look, it's it's worth it. It's getting me in the app, that's for sure. Like yeah. I was playing it all the time when I was up at um, at Christmas in the in-laws and uh, just chipping away and splitting those tokens. Like it's it's worth the spend. Get on it. All right. That being said, uh, make sure you check out the website. It is blockadepinball.com slash underscore, excuse me, episodes. No, no it is slash, slash episodes. Let's try that again. Yeah. Blockadepinball.com slash episodes. <laughs> That's where you'll find all the past episodes we have, as well as the current. Jared likes to drop in uh, show notes that include websites uh, and links to things that we talk about during the podcast. So make sure you go there. Um, I haven't mentioned it in a long time, but I'll say it. Redbubble.com, search Blockade. There you can find t-shirts. We would appreciate the support. It helps us uh, fund this little dog and pony show that we do. Um, Or if you just want to go... We actually have website renewal coming up. Um, which is, uh, we'll have to dip into the PayPal for. So, yeah, if you want to, if you've liked what you've heard this year, send us a couple of bucks, buy us a beer, and uh, it's really appreciated. Yeah, you can actually directly to, uh, donate into our PayPal. So, we yeah, it appreciate actually goes it. Into shut your traps, PayPal, but it's, it's all right. He doesn't spend it on, on beer. Nope. 
I don't. I only spend it on stuff directly applying to this podcast. So and, and there slurpees. you go. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, if, I, if, if, if I use it for Slurpees, it'd be gone in a month. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and then you'd come back around and go, hey, it's time to renew our website. And I'm like, ah, screw the website. Um, so, that's right. <laughs> anyway, uh, we, we truly do appreciate you guys, though, uh, watching us uh, when we come on here and interacting with us on the uh, the old chat stream while we're doing the Twitch broadcast. And for those of you that uh, watch on YouTube, it's greatly appreciated there. Do leave comments. I try and respond to any comment that gets uh, posted on YouTube. Yep. And then there's our longtime listeners that don't watch us at all. They just w- listen to the podcast. And to you guys, we very much greatly appreciate that because you've been around the longest. So. Yeah, you're stuck with us through all the craziness. That's what. <laughs> yeah, pinball was just posted driveway cheese, which was a uh, a bumper sticker that uh, we had. <laughs> yes, it was. That's, um, that's well, truly an in joke, a very old one. Yeah, I, I'm I'm kind of curious. I might even have one. Hold on, over to you, Jared. Oh, over, ooh, no, it's <laughs> yes. So the the whole story behind driveway cheese is we wanted to see how many people were actually listening to the show early on. And uh, and Chris actually produced these stickers to see if um, we could get it. Here it is. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. It makes zero sense whatsoever, but it made us laugh all the same. Um, just, just like this show, really. So, yeah. Um, yes. Well. All right. Well, that was, wow, we went a very long time today. Which is well, you know, we not to, a bad thing. We're not doing it every week. We got to fit a lot in. And there was a lot to talk about this this show before we actually end for the year. So I think it's justified. Well, it was one of those things too, where it was like I was kind of debating, ah, are we going to skip again? And then all of a sudden, this whole speculation thing popped up, and I was like, no, we need to do a podcast now, Jared. And since I'm busy yeah, tomorrow, we're, on, we're doing it we're today. <laughs> yeah, we've got to get on the speculation wagon. We haven't done this for ages, oh. and we need to do it. Yes, because yeah. speculation is our absolute favorite thing to do. Um, it's one of the Black Hate brands, actually, I think. Yeah. Yes. Actually, we should probably we probably have another speculation show coming up next, which would be just what is planned uh, in 2020, because a lot of people already started that thread and had a yeah, lot of ideas. Good stuff in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, in terms of just what tables they think that uh, Zen will put out. What's Zen's plan in general um there's a whole bit about people thinking there might be an fx4 to which i have a lot of reasons why there won't be um anytime Mm. soon but yeah maybe we'll uh maybe we'll hit that up next time too if we don't hit that up though jared what other things will we talk about definitely stuff and things our favorite all right folks thanks again catch you next time see you later